Y'all, I done did this intro about five times. Hey, hey, y'all. So welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Yvette. And as you clicked on this video, you can already see that I'm a mother of twins. Now, just to give a little recap, um, because everyone that clicks on this video isn't going to know. I am a mother to a boy and girl twins. And today is February the 10th. So in eight days, they will be one. One, you guys. I don't know how I made it here. This is going to be pretty much a sitting down video telling y'all what I know now that I wish I knew then. Um, also, I did want to have like some wine here, but I'm trying to do right, you guys. So we have water. Okay. So, and I got my hair on a little slick back, but... Okay, because I'm in between hairstyles right now. So, first off back, um, I want to say that everything that I'm going to say is not going to be the same for everyone that has twins. Your situation may be different, and I'll mention that more along as I go along. So, I hope y'all mind me sitting like this because we're about to get into some things. So, also, I have my iPad here so I can keep track of everything I want to say because I had to make a list okay so let's go all the way back <laughs> let's go back to the pregnancy first okay when i was pregnant when i found out that i was pregnant with twins if you have not watched the story time of me telling y'all how i felt and how i reacted when i found out go and watch that i'll put that up on the screen so you can watch that um but that was a very traumatic time um so when I found out that I was going to have twins, I really thought that I was not going to be able to do it. You guys, you cannot tell me that I will be sitting on the couch right now, almost a year later, trying to give advice to other people on how to make it because I didn't think I was going to make it really like I really didn't think I was going to make it. But as I as as I started to accept it, because I'm like, I mean, it is what it is now, like. I just have to accept it. I was sitting down writing in my journal and I remember I was on the porch and I was writing and I, I have like letters that I used to write to God and things like that. I kind of more so, I do it differently now, but back then I had letters that I would write to God. I'll put it on the screen. I don't mind showing you guys because I've overcame this now. So I'm gonna put it on the screen for you guys to read. At that time, you guys, I really did not know what I was going to do. I remember talking to my sister. My sister has twins also. Her twins are much older now, though. And one of the things that she told me that I will never forget was don't allow how you're feeling now, like as far as you feeling like you don't know how you're going to make it, that you're sad about it. Don't don't keep feeling like that the whole pregnancy because even though, yes, having twins, especially if you're not prepared for it, having twins can be very, like, a shock to your system. It's also a very happy thing. It's, it's, it's almost looked at as rare. It's not really rare, but it draws a lot of attention and it's just not the norm. It's more so normal to have a single baby versus twins or multiples in general. So she told me to not ruin this pregnancy by being sad about it. So if you are currently pregnant with twins and you're feeling down about it, that's my first piece of advice. Do not go your whole pregnancy feeling sad about it. Because once the twins are here and you're so grateful for them and you're making it, you don't want to look back on your pregnancy and think like, dang, I really spent my whole pregnancy sad. You don't want to do that. So once I finally was able to get over it, I embraced it. And I enjoyed being able to like decipher who was moving at the time, who was more of a mover, who was more laid back. Like those are the things that I loved about it. 
it was definitely some things that I did not like about it. For example, I just wish somebody would have definitely told me that the amount of movement that you feel, it can get overwhelming. Now, I know as a mom, when you're pregnant, you feel your baby moving, everything like that. Yes, it's, it's such an amazing feeling. But when you're pregnant with twins and you're feeling that constantly, it literally got, I used to be in my bed crying, y'all, because it literally was to the point where it was never a time where they were not moving. Never. Like, if it wasn't one, it was the other, or it was both at the same time. And as I got closer and closer to labor, it's like it definitely did not slow down. Like, they moved so much. So that's one thing that I feel like is not really talked about because I feel like if, if a mom says that she doesn't like feeling her baby move all the time, that's kind of looked at like, you don't like feeling your baby move? But it's not that. It just can get overwhelming, especially, like, comparing how much how much movement I felt from the twins versus when I was pregnant with just one baby. It was a lot. It was overwhelming. I was tired. I was like, listen. I was talking to my stomach like, listen, honey, can you please sit down? Sit down, go to sleep, something. Okay, that's how, that's what I wanted to say. So, um, but I can say during my whole pregnancy, I constantly drilled my mind with positive things. So I feel like a lot of the things that, a, a lot of the anxiety and the, the negative feelings that we have in life, sometimes it can just be created in our mind. So I feel like the fact of that when I was going through my pregnancy, I tried to keep a positive mindset at all times. That helped me so much. So if you're pregnant, just try it. Try. I know it's hard, y'all, because it's like just thinking about what's to come can make you so scared and so anxious. But just try to be positive because I am a walking, living testimony that it's going to be okay. Because, listen, I'm no better than nobody else. I felt all of the emotions. If, if you go back and watch my video of the story time of me telling, it's not no video saying, oh my goodness, I was so happy. And it's not a video making it seem like that it was all fun and get, like, no. Like, I was honest in that video. I cried. I let, you know, people could tell that that's not what I wanted. The doctor knew that's not what I wanted. So, I... I know how you feel, especially if you're overwhelmed. So just try to keep a positive mindset. Once the babies were here, it was it was a lot as far as little things that I did not expect. Like I started getting overwhelmed when I felt like they both required so much of my attention. I felt like they both were crying at the same time and they both wanted to be held and console and just they just wanted that feeling and at the time their dad wasn't there every single day with me because he had to go to work so I was doing a lot of it on my own my mom was there helping me but she had to work also so the times that I were literally by myself and I had to console both of them at the same time all three of us was crying because I just was like you crying, you crying. Now I'm crying because it's like, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't. Like, I can't. It's hard. It's hard to console two babies at the same time. And it's like, yeah, you could do this. But it's still, like, it's difficult because it's like, this is not really, like, a comfortable position to necessarily be consoling the babies. Like, you know, you want to hold them close to your chest. And it's hard to do that with two babies. And the babies don't understand they don't understand that there's more than one of them. They just think that it's all about them. And that's one thing that I always used to think like, oh, so you think you're just the only one here, right? It's not just you. you your sister over here too. <laughs> it just, that was just a lot. So I feel like that's, a, like that's one thing that I don't think I thought about prior to me like before they were here i didn't think about the fact of that they were both going to be crying at the same time and i needed to console them but because it's like i was thinking in my mind like okay one will be chilling the other one might be crying so i can console that one while the other one chilling no they're both crying at the same time so that was really like difficult for me and just 
when I was pregnant, I remember asking my sister, you know, as far as the twins, like sleeping at the same time, eating at the same time. And she told me that her twins was on the same schedule. So that's what I thought that it was going to be. No, it was not like that for me at all. And I would like for you to be prepared if you're not already there, that your twins may not be on the same schedule. I remember when the twins first got here and they were sleeping, it was literally me being up every one to two hours in the middle of the night because like at that time they were waking up every, what's, what is it, like two to three hours? They were waking up every two to three hours, but being that they weren't eating at the same time, so I would try to wake one up and feed them, but they didn't want to eat. And then also Khalil, y'all, I swear, Khalil drunk his bottle so slow it literally was taking him like an hour to drink his bottle and at that time you know they're only drinking a couple of ounces maybe like two ounces it took him like an hour to drink that Kaylani, Kaylani on the other hand was drinking it really fast so they weren't on the same schedule so I literally was up every um one or two hours and that was so draining for me like I was like yo I can't get any sleep so during the day when you know they say sleep when your baby sleep how can you do that if they're not on the same schedule how a lot of the times that i got some sleep it was like i don't know i don't even know how i made it honestly i don't know <laughs> but they were not on the same schedule they were not on the same schedule at all um now now it's kind of different so what I will say now is that they're still not more so on the same schedule, but I put them on the same schedule. So it's not that you can't get there. So let me give you an example. So now the twins are about to be one. So they like if I turn on Coco Melon, they can watch Coco Melon and let Coco Melon entertain them. I always put them down at the same time every single night. Some nights Kehlani will go to sleep quick. Khalil will be up. I always put them down at 830. And I have a camera in their room so I can check to see when they actually go to sleep. Khalil will be up until almost midnight. So they're not on the same schedule. But it's easier now because he's able to just be in the crib by himself. And he's not crying because Coco Melon is on. So I don't have to actually be up with him. So it does get easier in that sense. But they're still not necessarily on the same schedule. Now when it comes to eating... Eating is a little bit easier now because I definitely feed them on the same schedule. Um, whenever I sit down one to eat, I'm feeding the other one to eat also. Or if they're drinking a bottle, I'm feeding them their bottle at the same time. But usually when they're taking a nap, I lay them down at the same time, but they don't go to sleep at the same time. So most of the time, if they don't go to sleep at the same time, that means whatever baby go to sleep first, wakes up first, and then the other one might wake up a little bit after them. So that kind of does give me a break because having them both up at the same time can like, it can be a lot at times. So if I'm just dealing with one baby and the other baby is asleep, that gives me a little bit of a break, but it's definitely not where one is sleep for four hours and the other is up for that four hours and like it's not like that it's just that they're not sleep at the exact same time so don't think that you're going to be able to just lay them down at the exact same time they're going to fall asleep at the same time they're going to eat no no it's not like that but it's just that once they get a little bit older they can entertain themselves a little more so you could just turn on the tv or you know whatever your choice of entertainment is you can do that and they uh, they will entertain themselves so that's what I wish I knew, but like, I wish I knew that they would not, it's not always that they're going to be on the same schedule. And I have talked to other twin, twin moms or twin dads and they have said the same thing. So I'm like, okay, it's not just me. I also wish I knew that I did not need two of everything. So certain things you do need two of. For example, when I first got their crib, I just got one crib because I'm thinking, okay, they're small. They can be in one crib together. However, Kehlani was, and I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't even introduce the twin names for the people that are new here. So Kehlani is the girl and Khalil is the boy. So when I say their name, you know who I'm referring to. So Kehlani used to always pull Khalil hair. So I never wanted them to sleep in the crib together because 
he will be crying. I already know what he crying for. She over there pulling his hair. And also, Khalil, like, he came out really small, but he shot up. And even the doctor was surprised in his growth because he was in the 100th percentile, meaning that he was bigger like longer in length and way more than 100% boys his age. So he was so long that he was taking up a lot of the space. So in the middle of the night, I would try to lay them more so of like head to feet, but not directly like this, more so of like this. And it just was still like they would move in the middle of the night. So it eventually got to the point where they were like on top of each other or something not literally on top of each other but they would be trying to like kick each other off and stuff like that so two cribs definitely needed that um i literally just also purchased the second walker because at first i only had one walker so i thought that one could be in the walker and the other one could be more of like an bouncer thing but i end up have, having to get two walkers because they are transitioning over to walking so yeah, I had to get two walkers, but certain things you don't need. Like, I, I did a diaper bag video. I showed that you don't need two diaper bags. You One diaper bag is enough. It's just, I guess it just depends on your situation as far as what you need. Because, like, I heard some people say they only had one crib, but I needed two. So, it just depends on exactly, it just depends on what you need. You can't always go by what somebody else is saying because the situation might be different for you. Like, your twins might sleep in the same crib just fine. But it wasn't the same for me. So, you don't need two of everything, but you definitely need two of something. So, what I would recommend before you just go out and buy two of everything, I would just play it safe and see how your situation go first. Because I bought one crib first and then I saw that I needed a second crib. So just play it safe. Now, certain things like two car seats, you know you're going to need that, girl. So just go get two car seats because you know that's something that you're going to need. Yeah, you don't need two of everything, though. So between them being a newborn and three months of age, so Kelani was the crier, right? That girl cried all the time. I used to have to go to the doctor and be like, listen, she just won't stop. Like, she just cries all the time. So... I had to go to the doctor and ask the doctor, like, what is the problem? Like, what is wrong with her? And Khalil was just so chill. He was so chill. He, he slept all the time, barely wanted to open his eyes. And then all of a sudden, you guys, literally, it just seemed like one day their personality switched. Khalil was the one that was crying. Kehlani was so chill. And, like, right now, neither one of them cry more. But I will say that Khalil is more of the one that will cry and Kaylani really doesn't cry about anything. The only thing that she will cry about is like, say for instance, you say stop and like you use it in a like a loud voice. She'll cry because she doesn't like hearing you yell. But other than that, she doesn't really cry. Khalil is still the one that cries. Um, but the way that they come out as far as their personalities, that's that may not always be how they're going to be. So if you do have a baby that cries all the time, I just want to say just hang in there because I know how it feels. Like, y'all, if you go back to watch my 24 hours with three-month-old twins, so many in the comments say, oh, my goodness, why do they cry so much? Like, yeah, they cry a lot. <laughs> like, but it is not going to always be that way. So, it's just that I know it's hard to get through that point because hearing crying, it could definitely be torture. But... It'll get better. It'll get better. I can say it'll get better. A lot of the times whenever something started getting overwhelming for me, and I think I mentioned this in another video, but whenever something started getting overwhelming for me, even if I had tears in my eyes, like if they were crying at the same time, I would just close my eyes and I would say, this will not be, what did I say? I would say, this will not last forever. This will not last forever. This will not last forever. Because let me tell you guys, now that they're about to be one, I look back at pictures and I miss them being that age. I, I, I was just telling their dad this last night. Like I remember when I would have to take them out the crib. I mean, not the crib. I would have to take them out the car seat. And I, I, I would tell myself, man, I wish I could just take one out the car seat and put them on the floor and they just crawl off. And then I get the other one and then they just crawl off. Because at that time when I was wishing for that, they couldn't crawl or sit up. 
So I would have to carry them both into the living room. So I was saying, I wish I could just put them down. They just crawl into the living room on their own. And now they can do that. And I'm like, I miss my babies when they couldn't do that. So it's like, be careful what you wish for and just try to enjoy the moment enjoy them where they are right now you guys because it's like they're gonna get older and i'm literally oh my gosh don't cry but i'm literally like i was tearing up the other day because i'm like wow like my babies are really about to be one it's like i can't even really cuddle with them anymore because they don't stay still so it's just just be careful what you wish for like if you're in the moment right now don't keep wishing that they'll be older because once they get older you're going to be wishing that they could be small again. So just enjoy where you are right now. I know that is so cliche. And if you're wherever you're at right now with twins, if you're feeling overwhelmed, I know how it is. Because I was wishing for so many things. I was like, I wish they could hold their own bottle. Now that I don't regret because I got tired of holding that bottle, girl. I remember when they used to sleep all the time. I would say, dang, I wish they would be up a little bit more. Now, I'd be like, listen, I wish you would lay down for a nap. So it's like, just enjoy where you're, you are in the moment so another thing that i did not really think about back then was well another thing that i used to think about back then was how can i give the same amount of love and the same amount of attention to two babies at one time i used to always think that one would get more attention than the other and let their dad tell it he says that i give more attention to kaylani than i do khalil but i don't it's just that kaylani is my first girl so sometimes it's like I just be like, man, like I have a house full of boys and here my little girl. But it's like, I give them the same amount of attention, the same amount of love. I love them the same. Um, Khalil likes to be held a little bit more. He likes for you to give him a little bit more attention. He likes to be, you know, you rub his head. I can tell even when I rub his head, like his eyes get all low. Like it just feels so good to him. And Kaylani is more so more hyper she she's more of like she's more advanced so it's just it's just you can give them both the same amount of attention but i feel like it always works itself out because being that kehlani is so much more independent and khalil likes to be comforted comforted and he likes to be held and he likes to be you know just caress like back rubs and things like that it's like neither one of them is lacking in the attention part now i don't know because i've never met someone that said that both of their babies is requiring so much attention of them and it's hard but i feel like it always balances itself out so say for instance that it's ever a time where kehlani isn't feeling well or like she that day she just might want some more attention khalil just so happens to be more chill that day like he, you can turn on Coco Mella and he's fine. He doesn't want you to bother him. Khalil is so nonchalant to the point where he could be watching Coco Mella. He's just stuck into Coco Mella like this. And I'm like, Khalil. And I could literally be in his face calling his name. He just like this. And here I am, Khalil. And he just like this. I can even do this in his face. And he just like this. So he just be in his own little world but Kaylani, she pays attention to everything like if you come downstairs if somebody come in the door if she hear a noise she is so observant even when we go out if they're getting pushed in the stroller khalil will fall asleep and be knocked out the whole trip Kaylani, she will be up the whole time because she wants to see everything and it's funny because even when we were leaving the hospital and i'm gonna insert a little video Is that all? <laughs> Keep coming down over his eyes. <laughs> But when we were leaving the hospital, Kehlani's eyes was wide open. This one when they were newborn and Khalil was knocked out. So that's so crazy because even though their personalities did change as far as who cried more and things like that, they're still kind of uh, the same in that way. So it's just it's, it's funny seeing them grow up and just seeing how they really are but if you are worried about the fact that you can't give both of them your attention don't it's gonna be okay like you're gonna be able to do it because that's one thing i was worried about i didn't want to give one more love than the other i and, and even their dad said that when i was pregnant he just was saying i hope that i don't 
have love for one more than the other and, and you know that's natural it's okay for you to think like that even though we try to think oh don't let's not think like that it's it's okay for you to think like that it's okay for to have that worry but i'm here to assure you that you can love both of them the same and you can treat them both equally it will balance itself out so the next two things that i'm going to mention is kind of go hand in hand so I did not think about all of the attention that I was going to receive when going out. I was just talking to my sister today, y'all, and I was telling her how whenever we go out, I get more attention than I don't get attention. So say, for instance, people is walking past me. If somebody was to walk past me and not even acknowledge the fact that I have twins, I would be shocked because so many people like it's like lip literally everybody says something about it the moment they see two car seats the moment they see two babies in the stroller they always say something oh my goodness you have twins oh that's such a blessing i wanted twins my aunt got twins my sister got twins like you're gonna hear so many stories you're gonna get so much attention and at first that was definitely overwhelming for me but i really had to ask god to just um give me the patience to deal with it because i'm like girl how you gonna be a content creator and create content about twins but then you don't like when you get attention about twins so it can get overwhelming because sometimes when i'm looking raggedy which is 99.9 percent .9 of the time and i go into the store i don't want attention or if i'm just trying to get in and out i don't want attention but it, it just comes with it and you get a lot of it a lot because people always look at it and think that twins are so rare like you don't see it a lot so it brings a lot of attention so that goes into my second thing as far as saying going into stores with twins y'all it's hard especially when you're by yourself so in the beginning their dad used to always carry both of their car seats you know one in one hand the other in the other hand and now that they're a little older and heavier that's hard so it's not as easy because it's like we be struggling trying to get into the store or if i'm by myself and i just need to run into the store to get some bread eggs milk it's not just so easy for me to go in the store with one baby now say for instance right now the age they are now i could easily just put one into you know the, the front seat where they can sit up by themselves and push them in you know when you go in the store you see somebody with a baby no where you gonna put the other one at where you gonna put the other one at lisa like it's just it's 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 not that easy it's not so let me think what i do with that is one I either go to the store when I know somebody's going to be with me or I get food delivered as like Amazon grocery service, you know, Walmart deliver food, you know, things like that. I use delivery services, um, sponsor me, um, and, or if I know I do need to get a couple of things out of the grocery store, I'll just put them in their stroller, suck it up because it, it's a lot taking the stroller out, putting them on top of the stroller. But if I do really, really need to go in the grocery store, I will suck it up and just take them out of the stroller. I mean, put them in a the stroller and just put whatever I need in the buggy part at the bottom of the stroller. However, with that, you can't get a lot. So if you plan on doing a lot of grocery shopping, I would de definitely recommend having somebody with you or getting the food delivered because that's difficult and I didn't think about that. And even taking them to the car and from the car, it's a lot of work. Y'all, I have mentioned it so many times in some of my vlogs. I would have to carry both of them by hand. You know, just I wasn't even carrying them long distances just from the car to the car. I mean, from the house to the car and my chest started hurting like. I was starting to feel soreness in my chest and I was, I th listen y'all, I thought it was my time. I thought God was like about to take me out right in and there. But when I went to the doctor, she was saying that me carrying both of the twins by myself was too much on my chest um, muscles. So I sprained my chest muscles and it was hurting so bad. So those are things that I never thought about because I'm like, what? sprain my chest muscles i don't even work my chest in the gym like what but then i thought about it one day it hit me and i was like 
Oh, maybe it's from me carrying them. So those are things that I did not think, or even carrying them from up the stairs, down the stairs. Like that's a lot. It's like, y'all, it's a lot. You don't think about these little things, but it's a lot. Grocery shopping, going to the store. Like you can't just carry one. Say for instance, I wanted to go into maybe the convenience store up the street. And I'm like, okay, I could just take one out, carry it on my hip. Like, a, you know, that what a normal person with just one child would do. But when you have two, it's hard. That's something that I did not think about then that I definitely experienced now. So now that my twins are at the age to where they're developing different skills, like they are trying to start walking now, they are, you know, picking up their own foods. They're just, you know, de developing different skills. And for the longest, before I had twins, I always thought that everything, and I even said this so many times, I was like, you know, good thing, whatever they're going to be going through, they're going to be going through it at the same time. But it's, that's not necessarily true. For example, um, when it came down to them crawling, it was around the same time. But Kehlani started crawling first and then Khalil started crawling. Kehlani started eating baby food. Khalil was not eating baby food. So I was having to take him to an occupational therapist every week because I thought something was wrong. I thought that... I'm like, why is my baby not opening his mouth for food? Like, And this was like, he was like six, seven months at that point. So, you know, they're supposed to, you know, be introduced to baby food. He was not opening his mouth. He would turn his head. But I knew he knew how to open his mouth because he would open his mouth for his pacifier, for his bottle, to put anything in his mouth other than food. So, I knew he knew how to open his mouth, but he was not opening it for baby food. Kaylani though, she was opening it for baby food as soon as you put the spoon to her mouth now um at the state like now right now kaylani know how to uh do her hand like bye-bye and i've been trying to teach khalil and i'll be like khalil say bye-bye and he just be like here here go my hand khalil and he's like and i really feel like he be doing it on purpose because i'm like i know you hear me like i know you do it's just you think that when you have to and, and the doctor always tell me that she said that you know you have she was like sometimes it's hard because you have another baby to compare them to that's the same age so it's like you're wondering why is this baby doing this and this baby isn't doing that but they're two different people like even though they're twins they're two different people they're not going to do the same thing at the same time so just be prepared for that everything isn't going to be at the same time some things might some things might not just a piece of advice that i would definitely recommend especially if you well not even if you're in a relationship even if you're doing it by yourself make sure you find some time for you or you and your partner matter of fact you and then separately you and your partner because especially when you have two babies it's so hard um you know, your situation might be different as far as finding a babysitter. But like my mom, you know, having two babies at the same time, like her watching two babies at the same time is a little too, bit too much for her. So it's just, it's kind of harder for us to find a babysitter. So it's kind of more difficult for us to spend a long time together. Um, I also have to figure out different ways of me having my alone time. So for example, right now they're taking a nap. So this is my time that I can film a video or sometimes I just sit down and write in my planner. Sometimes I just do nothing. Sometimes I take a nap with them, but it's just, you have to find time for yourself because having a baby, whether it's a baby or two babies, but especially two babies, because that's two different individuals and two babies you have to tend, at, tend to, it can be a lot. So make sure you're finding time for yourself because that I didn't think that it was going to be this hard. It was like, I just was like, you know, my mom will keep them if I want to go do something. And my mom be looking like, who? Who? Like a like an owl. Who? Who? Who going to keep them? It's just make sure you find time for yourself. So for me, I go to the gym and I go to the gym every day. And I take them to the gym daycare. And even though they're still at the gym with me, they're at the gym daycare. And sometimes before I even start working out, I'll go sit on the couch and read my book or sit on the couch and listen to a podcast. But that is the time to myself. 
And I'm just like, you know, you have to find time. Like, me and their dad, um, say for instance, we can't get out the house. We'll sit downstairs and watch TV together. At first, we did have their cribs in our room. And I made it an initiative to put them in their own room because I felt like that me and him was not having our alone time. I just felt like it was always babies in the room. It wasn't, we, we like, we needed some type of separation. And honestly, putting them in their own room was the best thing we could have did because now they go to sleep like at first if they were in the same room with us they would see us right there so they're crying because they want to get out the crib and for us to hold them but being that they're in their own room they don't see us they just watch coco melon fall asleep and even when they wake up y'all i have to look at the camera to see that they're up because even when they wake up they'll just be sitting in the crib waiting for us to come get them so those little things like that I appreciate because it was a time to where as soon as they would wake up, they were crying. And for them to wake up and not even cry, just sit there until we come get them, those are little things that I appreciate so much because I try to find time for myself in the morning time or at night when they're going to sleep. So if I'm up in the morning trying to get everything together um, to start my day, to know that they're not like rushing me to come get them as soon as they get up. That's just a blessing right there. Because that's little things that we do not think about. Like, I, like you don't think about the fact of that you're not going to be able to do what you need to do. Because the baby's going to be waking up as soon. I mean, crying as soon as they wake up. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I appreciate the fact of that they do not cry as soon as they wake up anymore. Like, I literally have to look at the camera. And I'm like, well, dang, how long have I been up for? Because they don't make any noises like they just be there <laughs> the last thing that i wish i knew then that i know now is that it's gonna be okay and i know that sounds so cliche i know you're like it's gonna be okay like everybody say that but y'all it's really gonna be okay like if i can't do anything else in my life i just want to be proof to y'all it's going to be okay i was so worried you guys like i thought my life was over i thought that i was not going to be able to do anything but it's okay and so i really want you to know that it's going to be okay it is not the end of the world do not worry even if you're pregnant right now don't even worry about if they're saying that the babies have not turned i was so worried that i was gonna have a c-section y'all i was so worried I push the babies out no problem but I, it's just do not worry whatever it is it's going to be if you can't change it don't worry about it don't worry and i am a worrier so for me to tell y'all this please take heed do not worry it's going i promise you it's gonna be okay that's it for this video you guys i know i have been sitting here talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking but i hope i helped somebody out there i hope you guys enjoyed this video oh my goodness I, I just can't believe it's a whole year later and so many more years to go but i've made it through year one okay so thank you for watching this video don't forget to go follow me on instagram at all things yvette and don't forget to subscribe you guys and as always i love y'all and i'll see you in my next video bye ciao can y'all hear the frog in my throat? My throat dry. Mm.